We're going to create a, an omni-channel retail champion in the UK, and we're going to be number two effectively in, in the UK grocery market. Uh, we're going to have a business which is going to have around 29 billion pound of turnover. We're going to have around 1,800 sites. We're going to have a business which will allow us to extend the Asda brand to a wider community than we currently can do, mostly because we're going to have food service and we're going to have convenience, which uh, we haven't had in strength in the Asda business hitherto. It's interesting that you mentioned nearly 2,000 sites. I mean, uh, much of the last decade, the debate in groceries was around online uh, food sales, something you know a lot about given your, your prior chairmanship of uh, Ocado. Is the pendulum swinging back more to traditional retail than it has done for, for the last 15 years or so? No, I think the key word, uh, Wilfred, is omni-channel. Today, if you're going to be somebody who's going to compete in this very competitive world that we compete in, you've got to be able to touch all places. So we have to give customers what they want, where they want, how they want it, and we, we will do that. So we will do it in petrol forecourt stations. We will do it through convenience. We will do it through our online deliveries. We'll do it in our convenience stores, in our supermarkets, in our hypermarkets. Um, I read through the press release uh, in detail your comments, comments of your, of your very various colleagues throughout the business. What's not mentioned uh, is the debt position of, of the company. Uh, is it fair to say that that was a driving force behind the, the deal as well, that it might give the combined business a better chance to refinance, given that rates have rised, and what is overall a, a very leveraged business still? Uh, the, 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 the main reason that we have done this deal is one that we have been looking at for some time is that when uh, we took over the ASDA business some 18 months, two years ago, we knew that we had some massive strengths, but we knew we had some opportunities to build on to that, and that was the convenience part of our business. You'll have recall that uh, some months ago, a while back, we acquired 119 sites from the co-op, and we've now hired, we've now acquired or will acquire another number of sites which will allow us to extend our convenience business. Uh, now, the, 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 uh, when you talk about the debt position, the debt position in terms of leverage in ASDA won't materially change going forward. But, but this, uh, this will allow you a benefit of the deal is a hope that you'll be able to refinance uh, some of the, the debt from EG uh, now across the combined business? Well, it is true to say that in doing this transaction, it will uh, allow uh, EG to delever a little bit at some point in time. But, this, but the primary purpose of today and what's driven today in our strategic direction today is about driving the ASDA business. When we bought the ASDA business back in 2021, we were ambitious to become, for instance, number two in the retail sector in the UK. We're currently number three and we're ambitious to be number two. Doing what we're doing today will allow us to be able to get onto that roadmap and, get, and move on in that direction. Let's touch a little bit about the outlook for uh, food prices here in the UK. It's been a hot topic, of course. Do, do you think the worst of the food price inflation ha has been and gone, or is there, there are higher rates of inflation still to come? Well, I'm hopeful that we are at the peak and you know, that we will steadily see decline now. But, you know, we sadly haven't been able to see the quick declines that were speculated on earlier in the year. Well, you know it's a very complicated situation uh, causing this, this uh, inflationary situation. But I must say, not just ASDA, all retailers, Wilfred, are very, very efficient. We are a very efficient industry. The, in real terms, the cost of food, the cost of clothing and the cost of electronics has come down over the last 20, 30, 40 years, largely due to the efficiency of retail and governments of any complexion owe, uh, owe us a debt of gratitude. And this recent uh, you know, speculation over the last couple of days about uh, you know, fixing prices, it's frankly, you know, uh, this, this is rather backward looking. It reminds me uh, of uh, a man of a certain age and a prices of incomes policy that we used to have in the late 60s. Uh, let's touch on that a, a little bit, because clearly an argument was made, successfully made, that uh, the oil and gas majors uh, did deserve to pay a, a one-off windfall tax. What, why do food retailers not deserve either to see price controls or, or face a windfall tax? Well, let's just take this very simply. We'll look at, the, look at the profit margins of food retailers and look at the profit margins of the energy people over the last 18 months, and the answer will be very clear. You know, retailers make between 3 and 4% margin. That's what they make. And that's, you know, that, that, if you took, can compare that against margins made by other industries, and let's take the energy industry, that's a completely different. That's comparing an apple and a pear. We are a very efficient industry, and we are very competitive. And you know, with the number of outlets that we've got here now, the consumer has got massive choice, uh, and, uh, and in real terms, fantastic value for money.
No, it's definitely a fair point. Low single-digit profit margins uh, clearly is, is not as excessive as, as some businesses. I guess the question uh, for, for, for here and this year ahead when there's clearly cost of living pressures, uh, we can't see with Asda because it's not publicly listed that the detail that you can see in other margins. W would you and do you think your colleagues at other big food retailers pledge not to increase that margin during this, this tricky time for consumers? We've all lent in. Look at the profit results that were produced by our competitors and ourselves. Most retailers or, or grocery retailers' profits over the last year have gone backwards. Whether you're talking about Tesco, whether you're talking about Sainsbury's, whether you're talking about Asda, they've all gone backwards. We as an industry have lent in and done some very, very good work in making sure our customers get great prices. We had an operation well ahead of the government's proposal last week about locking prices down, which we called Dropped and Locked, where we fixed prices for nearly a year at the beginning of 2022. So we're very active in making sure we sell close to, stay close to our customers and give them the deals that they expect. But it's tough because if you look at commodity prices as they come through for all the reasons we know, they've been going up. Whether it's raw material prices, whether it's oil, whether it's wheat, whether it's uh, 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 butter fats, you know, we've seen massive increases. Your question earlier was, uh, have we reached the peak of that? I would hope so. And you know, going forward into 2024, let's hope that we reach better times. Um, just touching on fuel retail prices, uh, petrol prices as well, something that, of course, you're, you're heavily involved with uh, too, somewhat in, in the eye of the storm here in terms of your exposures. The CMA recently reported that at least one supermarket has significantly increased its internal forward-looking margin targets over this period. There was speculation they, they were referring to you. Is it unfair, though, to look at uh, ASDA uh, and EG's uh, relative price increases of fuel as opposed to the absolute because on absolute levels you're, you're fairly low and you're starting from a point where prior owners, Walmart, the US owners, wanted to drive footfall into the stores and make a loss with fuel retail. Well, just talk us through some, some of your current pricing and thinking on that. Well, the, 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 the thinking is quite simple, Wilfred. We were and have been for many years the price leader amongst the big four supermarkets. We are currently the price leader amongst the four supermarkets. We are committed to be the price leader amongst the four supermarkets, full stop. Fair, fair, fair enough. So that, that might, though, mean ongoing percentage increases, but in absolute levels, you, you'll, uh, you, you'll maintain your, your price leadership. We will be the cheapest amongst the big four. Fair enough. Um, so, so just uh, coming back to the, the bigger picture, uh, Lord Rose, do you understand the predicament the government faces when it has to weigh up whether to impose price controls, whether it has to weigh up to impose windfall taxes, or, or would it be a terrible error for the long-term future of British business if the government pushed further than it has done already, more than just rhetoric, uh, into the food retail space to, to try and uh, Im impose some price limits? Listen, I'm not an economist, but I'm a businessman. I've been in business for 50 years. You can't interfere with market forces. At the end of the day, you have to trust us as retailers to give our consumers the best deals. Our customers are very savvy. They're very smart. They know that we're working hard to do things on their behalf. We will continue to do so. Intervention it always brings in unintended consequences. And personally, I would not recommend it.